In this video, I'm going to show you when is the right time to close out a short put option position. I'm also going to show you why it's best to close short option positions early, how you go about doing it, and the benefit you can receive by closing your short option positions before expiration. Hello everyone, welcome back to my life of learning. My name is Randy Perez. Please know that I am not a financial advisor and this video is not meant to be investment advice of any kind. I am, however, a 22 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. Before we get started, I just ask one thing of you. Please hit the like button to support this channel. I'm about to give you some really awesome information I know you're going to find great benefit in. So if you appreciate the kind of material I provide for on this channel, please support it by hitting the thumbs up like button. Thank you for that. Let's get started. If you're watching this video, then like me, you either love option trading or you're new to option trading and want to become a better, more profitable option trader. Closing short option positions early is a very important aspect of being a successful, highly profitable option trader. Let's first talk about when is the right time to close out a short option position. Here you see a list of the four short put option positions we closed out early over the past week. As you can see in the far right column in the blue box, these four positions were all closed out between April 27th and April 30th. If you follow the red arrow over to the left, you see that these were all options that expire on May 21st. So these are all options that we bought to close them out three to three and a half weeks early. And the column just to the right of that, under price, you see that we paid anywhere from 20 cents to 40 cents per share to buy these options back. The question is, was that the right decision? The answer is absolutely. Let me show you why. Now you see the rest of the story. Yes, we had to pay, as you can see in the blue box, anywhere from 20 to 40 cents per share to buy those options back, but we're able to swap those positions out for, as you can see in the orange box, with new short put option positions that paid us anywhere from $1.17 per share to even $6 per share. Now let's calculate the total benefit or cash that we put into our pocket as a result of closing these positions out early. I know there's a lot going on here, so let me break it down for you. At the bottom left, in the black font, you see that it cost us $324 plus commission to close those May 21st positions out this past week. In the middle column where the red font is, you see that as a result of selling new options last week, we pocketed $1,757 minus commission. Then at the bottom far right in the blue font, you see that the net we put into our pocket last week as a result of rolling these nearly worthless short put options into new positions was $1,433 minus commission. Also, please notice that of the four new short put option positions that we sold, three of them were for the exact same expiration date, May 21st. So was it the right time to close these positions out early? Yes, it was, and the reason is that we would have had to wait three to three and a half weeks to pocket that final $324. That's just not worth it. We can reload our positions and for that same time period, pocket an extra $1,000. Plus, we'll start the clock on that Intel position, which expires on June 18th, to see if we can again, sometime before June 18th, buy those short put options back for next to nothing and use that capital to enter a brand new position. Now, I just showed you one week here. If you were to do this over the approximately four weeks every single month, well, you begin to see how you could really supercharge your returns. So now the question is, when should you close a short option position and roll that capital into a new position? Well, it's really a personal opinion. I like to wait till the positions that we have sold only have about 10 to 20% of time value premium left in them. The reason I like to wait until there's only 10 to 20% of time value premium left in the position is because if you try to roll a position every time you have a small gain, just keep in mind that it's really a cost of doing business to buy those old short put options back. That's why I wanted to make sure that I showed you this past week that it cost us $324 plus commission to buy those old, nearly worthless short positions back. However, we were able to replace them with positions that produce additional awesome cash flow. I'm not saying that we consistently do this, but if you just ran the numbers for the past week, if you're able to put an additional $1,000 each week into your pocket by closing out nearly worthless positions and entering new ones, then over the 4.3 weeks a month, you'd have received an additional $4,300. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. Let's talk through in more detail when is the right time to close out a nearly worthless put option. As I mentioned earlier, it may be a percentage of profit that triggers closing it out early. I really like to use that technique, but there is another technique I like to use as much or maybe even better than that one. Let me show you what it is and why. Here's one of the positions that we closed out last week in Bristol Myers Squibb 
ticker symbol BMY. In addition to the option only being worth around 34 to 40 cents when we close them out, as you can see at the top two lines here, notice what was going on in the daily chart. Bristol Myers had advanced nicely from around $62 back on April 6th to where it was then trading around $66 per share. For the previous week or so, it had basically gone sideways. With the long legs on each of the candlesticks for those previous several days, we saw that there was a lot of buying and selling going on, but not a whole lot of upward or downward price movement. This told us that Bristol Myers had pretty much run out of steam on its recent upward climb. Also notice here where the white line is located at that Bristol Myers, in addition to running out of steam, was hitting up against the previous resistance that it had found several months ago in January. All these factors put together helped us realize that it was probably the best time to close this position out, just in case Bristol Myers decided to retrace. Well, what happened? I'm sure you've all heard the saying, timing is everything. Well, in this situation, timing was everything. Here's what happened. No, every single one of our trades doesn't work out this good, but this is a nice example of how putting your knowledge together of technical indicators, technical analysis, as well as watching the value of your options, how it can help you become a better, more profitable option trader. The very next day at the far right where the white arrow is pointing down, the next day after we closed out our final short put option position in Bristol Myers, it declined 6%. The day after that, it went down another dollar. Now that Bristol Myers was back at its previous support, the red 200 moving average here on the daily chart, we decided it was time to get back in. So as you can see here, just a couple of days after we closed this initial Bristol Myers position out, we were able to sell a new set of put options at a strike price even a little bit lower than our previous one. Notice that on April 30th, we sold the May 21st $62 put options, whereas up top, we had bought to close the May 21st 62 and a half put options. So we were able to sell new put options at a strike price 50 cent lower than the previous one. And we pocketed an extra $390 on this one position by closing out those nearly worthless put options on the 27th and 28th. When an underlying stock has advanced and then stalled out, if the remaining put option premium is nearly worthless, then in my opinion, it's best to go ahead and close that position out and put that capital to work in a brand new position. Let's take a look at this from a different angle. Now we could use this exact same trade in Bristol Myers to prove our point, but let's switch things up a little bit. Let's switch over to another trade we closed out last week in Cogent Communications, ticker symbol CCOI. On this slide I showed you earlier, you saw that we bought to close the short put options in Cogent Communications that we're about to talk about now. But going back to when we initiated this position in Cogent, here you see that on March 30th, we sold five $65 May 21st put options and were paid a little bit over $3.23 per share for those put options. If you count the number of days, you see that if we stayed in this trade for the entire length of the contract, we'd be in it for 52 days. If we had stayed in this position for those 52 days, we'd actually had a pretty decent return. If you do the math, we would have paid about a 34.9% annualized non-leveraged cash on cash return. So the question is, what was our return after paying 20 cents per share to close that position out early? Here you see our two trades in Cogent. In the red rectangle, you see that we were paid $3.23 per share when we sold it. And then right about a month later on April 30th, we bought those put options back for 20 cents per share. So we put a net of $3.03 per share minus commission into our pocket. We ended up being in this trade for 31 days instead of the 52 days that we were originally under contract for. However, we were able to pocket almost the entire premium. If we annualize that return by closing this put option position out early, we turned a position that was going to pay us a 34.9% annualized return into a position that paid us a 54.9% non-leveraged cash on cash return. We almost doubled our return. Well, what do we do with the money that we had set aside for that cogent communications position? As you can see here, 10 minutes after we bought to close those cogent communications put options for 20 cents per share, our order got filled to re-enter that Bristol Myers position that I spoke about earlier. You see, whenever we're looking to close out a position early, almost always before we actually close that position out, we have its replacement lined up and ready to go. So before we placed the order in Cogent Communications to close it out early, we went through our trade list ideas, we checked the charts, we checked the technical indicators, and found that Bristol Myers was back in a position where we felt comfortable selling put options in it once again. Once we confirmed that we had a solid replacement for Cogent, we closed it out and got paid again by selling new put options in Bristol Myers. If you'd like to receive alerts as soon as we make trades similar to the trades I talked through in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more details about when is the right time to sell put options, check out the video in the link above in the description below entitled, When Should You Sell Put Options? 
In that video, I talk through in detail two positions that will help you know when and why it's the right time to sell put options. Then towards the end of that video, I give you a bonus in which I share with you how you can legally use options to manipulate your positions. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.